Using four children at Lennox Avenue as a starting point or like a point of entry into Dawood Bay's works, part of the Harlem USA series in the 70s, knowing what we know about the Harlem Renaissance, the way that African-American scholars would refer to it then as the New Negro Movement, scholars like Alan Locke, um, how that movement reached a significant height in the 1920s, and knowing that these Dawood Bay photographs, the artist himself went out and took these photos in the 70s. What does it mean for the subjects of those photos to, to be inheriting that legacy of a Harlem that, that got this legendary status in the 20s and their coming of age in this, this new Harlem, this modern Harlem? First base starting point is literally at the 1969 Harlem On My Mind exhibition, which is showing works from um, the 1920s from that peak of the Harlem Renaissance. And so Bay goes to this exhibition originally trying to understand what the commotion was about. The Black Emergency Coalition had called for a protest because there weren't any works um, shown by African American artists, there were no sculptures um, or paintings by African American artists. And so they called protests to that, which attracted commotion um, to the exhibition. Bay is there for the commotion. He's there to kind of understand what everyone is clamoring about. Um, but he becomes enchanted by these works of James Van Der Zee, which show um, the, the gorgeousness of Harlem in the 20s, shows the prominence that uh, black culture reaches at this time. Got you. I can think of a few James Van Der Zee photos of, of beautiful black people and furs and silks and outrageous style of beautiful cars and all of these things. So when I think of 1920s Harlem, that definitely brings me to James Van Der Zee. When Bay sees the work of Van Der Zee, um, he kind of begins to understand how blackness can be focused um, and be centered specifically in a museum space. This inspires him and he takes his own photos of the 70s Harlem, um, which for children on Lenox Avenue is a part of. We see the lineage of the Harlem Renaissance most obviously translated through the architectural details. In the background of that image, there's this art deco closed nightclub in which these children are kind of clearing and getting ready for um, their day in front of. And so they're literally the stage for them um, in the 70s, the stage for black life in the 70s is backdropped by um, the life of the 20s that they are inheriting. And then also within the figures themselves and within the history of black folks do we see this lineage continue. Um, within the children we see this pressed hair that we can tell took hours and took amount of time to complete. We see pressed clothes and we see they, they look put together, they look like they've taken time to coordinate um, how they're gonna look for school today. And in that, we have that lineage of respectability, that same idea of the people in the fur coats um, who are elevating their blackness. We see this continue to children within the 70s in the image. That's so interesting. Thank you so much for that. So moving from Harlem, USA, I know another one of the photographs that we, that I, we were gonna ask you to focus on was from the Small Camera Street Photography Series. And for that series, what, that, what, what piqued my interest in it was where the, art, the artist's intention behind it. And the artist's intention behind it for me is very much located in the fact that Dawood Bay did not take these photographs in a studio with like uh, staged lighting or with all of the minutia of making sure that all of these elements are exactly as the artist intended. He took his small camera, went out into the street, and photographed people in that context. And, and what does that mean to you? I think art historically here at Bay is calling on a long tradition of capturing that perfect moment, of finding his subjects in a precise second where the light hits their face in the right way, or where the shutter in the background matches some piece of their clothing. He's finding images and, and architectural details surrounding them. He's using the landscape to inform them um, as human beings. And I think that's really the difference here between his studio photography and those that happen on the street, kind of impromptu. We can see that action within them. We are looking at two boys at a handball court. This image shows two men. There's an older man and a younger child. Um, both of them are within this basketball court. And I think something that's always been notable to me is that there are so many instances in where Bay could have taken a photo that we've seen before. Mm -hmm. The stereotypical image of black men um, in a basketball court. 
maybe in the action of playing basketball, or maybe in some format that we kind of already have um, an idea of. But in this image, he allows us to focus on not only the people within the image, we see this kind of fierce, um, direct gaze from both our subjects in the image, but there's also the light that he plays along with throughout their faces and throughout the entirety of the image, which reflect his interest as a photographer in highlighting not only the black community um, and highlighting not only the youthful qualities um, and, and the cool qualities of being black, uh, but also being a detailed and careful photographer and looking at how that environment can create a new and an interesting holistic picture. That's really great. And that's a great segue into um, the question that I wanted to ask about his black and white photography series, which was moving from two boys at a handball court to a couple in Prospect Park. I wanted specifically to interrogate like the formal qualities of the image and the interplay of light, the way that the, the couple is actually positioned in relation to their environment. I've always found that image so interesting because of the what David Bay was able to capture there whether it was a part of his conscious mind or not in the moment, the way that the couple is leaning into each other and leaning on each other, and in the background there's this tree that's kind of like leaning into them as well, that creates this, this interesting synergy that you're talking about, like about matching um, a color of the clothing to a shutter or the light falling particularly in one moment. The way that the tree functions in that photograph feels, um, to me is a really important part of the environment. And the other thing that I love about this portrait that speaks to your idea or what you brought up of the, the direct gaze of the participant or of the subject of the portrait, I love the differences in the gazes of the young man and the young woman. With the young woman, her chin is lifted in such a way that she's gazing almost downward at the camera um, and at the viewer while her, the, the young man that she has her arms around and has his arms around her waist has is taken the opposite. Like his gaze is, his head is slightly lowered with his eyes kind of looking upwards, which I always think is so interesting, that interplay between those, them two. And which I, I love about Da Wu Bay capturing people in their, in an encounter in their own environment. Instead of in a studio where, um, an artist or a photographer might direct you like, oh, tilt your head this way to catch the light, do this. It, their own expression of self came through in the way that they chose to look at the camera. And it says so much about them as people. Like you, you can really feel, she has almost this, this regalness that comes from the way that her chin is lifted and she's looking downward. She, she feels almost like she's elevating herself.